Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be part two in my series on Langchain Rag tutorial. This video is a companion to an article that I wrote on medium.com. You'll find the link in the video's description. In this article, I'll explain how to integrate chat history into your RAG application so that you can have a conversation so that when you ask a first question, you can ask a follow-up question and it remembers what the conversation was all about. At the end of the article, I also included a section on how to uh, have your memory persistent in an SQL database. So let's get started. Let's start by visiting the article. First thing is uh, all the code examples uh, can be found on my GitHub. Uh, the link will be in the video's description. Now this article is based on a notebook published by Langchain, uh, which is part of their use cases and it's on how to add a chat history to your RAG application. Why do we need history? Well, when you start to have a conversation with your RAG application, um, you need to provide all the question, well, the first question, and if you have a follow-up question, well, it doesn't know because since we're using a vector database, um, and you, if you submit the follow-up question, it might not have all the dependencies of the original question and will probably won't be able to answer the question. So we need a way to, to fix this. And this is what this article uh, will be covering. Let's start with an example. First, make sure you have all the dependencies installed. Um, if you're running it from the original notebook, please note that I've added uh, SQL Alchemy because at the end, I'm going to demonstrate how to save the uh, history to an SQL database. Okay, so I'm going to start by showing you a chain without uh, the history. So let's load my uh, environment variables. Let's instantiate the chain, which is basically the code uh, from the quick start example. Okay, so we have a loader, which is basically uh, loading uh, Lilium Wang's article. We have a splitter with chunks of 1,000 and an overlap of 200. This is basically uh, to vectorize the content of the blog. Okay? We're using a prompt from the hub, which is fine. And then we have our chain. Okay? So what happens if I say, what is task decomposition? Then it answers, task decomposition is a technique, blah, blah, blah. But what if, what if I say, what was the last question? Then it says, I don't know. Okay? Because we don't have history. So, and, and since whenever we talk to the LLM, the connection is stateless. Every time we connect, it doesn't remember the previous time. Okay? Otherwise, uh, OpenAI, they, they couldn't keep up. I mean, if they had to keep history with the millions of conversations that are going on, uh, simultaneously, it would be impossible. So it's our responsibility that when we submit a question to the LLM to also provide the context, okay? So in a regular um, chatbot conversation type application, it's pretty easy because all you have to do is submit the history. For example, if you say, uh, who's Bill Gates? It's going to answer Bill Gates is the founder of Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. And you can just follow up with a question and say, is age? And it's going to know, it's probably going to respond with his date of birth and his age and so on and so forth. In the case of a RAG application, you only want to answer based on the context provided in, in the blog. So if I use the regular approach of just providing the chat history and I say, what is task decomposition? It's going to answer. If I do a follow-up question and I say, um, why is it good, for example? Well, there might be several other uh, points in the document, in the blog, that could also qualify to answer the question, why is it good? So we need to change the question, okay? We need to uh, contextualize the question so that we can reformulate the question so that the LLM will know that I'm asking what is good about task decomposition. And that's what 
this article is all about, okay? So what does it mean to contextualize a question? Well, in essence, it means that we're going to make two calls to the LLM. First one, to reformulate the question, and the second one, to answer the question. So to do this, we need to create a special prompt, okay? We need to have a contextualized prompt, which will say, given a chat history and the latest user question, which might reference context in the chat history, reformulate a standalone question which can be understood without the chat history. In other words, if I say, um, what is tasking composition? And I have a follow-up question that says, what's good about it? Well, the LLM will reformulate it and, and send me back a new question, which is basically going to say, what is good about task decomposition? And then it's going to submit that question to the LLM. How does it work? Well, first we need to create what we call a retriever, and we call it a history-aware retriever. Basically, we, we um, create a chain which has our LLM, our retriever, and our prompt, okay? Once we have that, we create our system prompt, which is basically a, stand, a standard prompt, which is uh, you are an assistant for question and answering, okay? And then we create our question and answer chain, which is a stuffed document chain, which has the LLM and our prompt for answering question. And then we create our rag chain, which is basically a retrieval chain, which has our history aware retriever and a question answer chain, okay? So to make this simple, just you, you, all you need to understand is that we're making two calls to the LLM. One call to reformulate the question and one call to answer the question. The chat history is stored in a dictionary called store, okay? So let me reinstantiate the chain here. And let's take a look at the store before I submit any question. See, it's empty. So now let's ask our first question. What is task decomposition? And I get task decomposition involved breaking down complex tasks into smaller steps, blah, blah, blah. Now let's take a look at the store. And we have our session ID, our memory object, which is the human message, and the AI message, which is the answer, and nothing else. What happens if I ask a follow-up question? It knows, since it reformulated the question, that I'm saying, what are common ways of doing it? But doing what? Well, common ways of task decomposition. Okay, now let's take a look at the store. Now I still have my session ID, my original question, my first answer. And now if I scroll slowly, I should have another uh, right here. See, what are common ways of doing it? And my last answer. Okay, that's all nice, okay? But what happens if I restart the computer or clear my notebook? Okay, let me restart the notebook. Let me clear, restart, and now I'm gonna reinstantiate the chain. Let's take a look at the store. It should be empty. Okay, now I'm not gonna ask the first question. I'm gonna go straight to the second question, okay? Now it's gonna say, God knows what. See, common ways of extending the capabilities of LLM through the user. Okay, so definitely not what I was expecting. Obviously, this question is too vague. Okay, so this is why we, we need to do this. But it's fine if you never restart your uh, server. But what if you do restart your server and you want to continue the conversation where you left off? Well, we need a way to have a persistent history. And that's what we're going to see next. Before I continue with the uh, persistence with uh, SQL Alchemy, please, if you like this video and you feel that this content is worth it, please like and subscribe because this really helps the uh, YouTube algorithm to promote my video. So please like and subscribe. So the original uh, Langchain notebook didn't provide any mechanism to uh, save the chat history to an SQL database. So I decided to um, add this little code snippet, which is pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, basically, we're going to import the SQL Alchemy modules, okay? 
and uh, we're going to define our, in this case, I'm going to use SQLite. We're going to define our database. We're going to define our two tables. One, one is called session, the other one's called message. And then we're basically going to instantiate the engine and we're going to call the create all to create the tables if they don't exist. Okay. Then we're going to create a few functions, a few helper functions. One, one is called save message, which is basically going to save the messages to the uh, database. One to load the session history and one to get the history, which basically called load uh, session history and then a save all session. Okay. So, and we're going to modify a little bit, at the end, we're going to create a new function that we're going to call invoke and save. And we're going to pass a session ID and our question. Okay. So in essence, it's nothing fancy. We just created the two tables, uh, instantiated the uh, engine. And whenever we call, um, whenever we invoke the LLM, we're going to read the history from the database and repopulate the store. So we all always have um, the history ready to go. Now, if I use a software like DB Browser, I can see that my two tables have been created and my message table is empty. See if I refresh. Okay, now let's clear this, restart, and let me reinstantiate my new chain, which is now connected to the database. And let's ask a first question. What are the types of memory? Okay, it should give me an answer. And if I refresh my table, I get my question, I get the answer. Okay, so nothing fancy. Now, if I ask a follow up question, like what was my previous question? See, your previous question was what are the types of memory? Which is correct. Now, let's take a look. And now I should have another pair human AI. Okay. Now let's just say, I'm not going to ask the third question. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear and restart. Okay. Now I'm going to reinstantiate the chain and I'm only going to ask the last question that says, can you list them again? And it should say the types of memory are blah, blah, blah. Okay. So even though I restarted my notebook. It kept my history because now the history is persistent into an SQL database. So this is it for part two of my uh, series. Uh, this was uh, adding chat history to our RAG application. And I added a little bonus on how to persist the chat history to an SQL database. Next week, we'll be looking at implementing the streaming capabilities. So again, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next week.